good afternoon uh, to comma one uh, those who are studying to comma one now we are going to continue our uh, regular classes through online that's what uh, we agreed earlier online teaching uh, before uh, cat one we completed our uh, unit five today i'm going to continue unit six unit six it's integrated this is surveillance some of this unit we discussed earlier but today i wanted to continue again with the online teaching so under unit two there are uh, two subtopics we are going to discuss today the first one it's epidemiology of infectious disease the second one it's non-infectious disease you can say infectious disease uh, it's a communicable the non-infectious disease it is not communicable non-communicable disease but it can uh, spread through individuals so we are going to discuss the two subtopics that is infectious non-infectious infectious communicable disease non-infectious non-communicable disease you can also go, say communicable and non-communicable or you can say infectious and non-infectious Um, for this uh, particular class, the, after com completing this session, I am expecting you to learn uh, the following things. The learning objective for this session, you are supposed to learn, you can able to define what is surveillance, then you can able to discuss the purpose of the surveillance, why we are doing the surveillance after the class, after the session, you are going to learn the purpose of the surveillance. Then you supposed to you can able to identify public health importance of uh, diseases that are under the surveillance of Zambia. What kind of uh, uh, the the communicable non communicable disease under surveillance in our country? Then you can able to define what is communicable disease, non communicable disease. Then you can also able to discuss the various components of uh, infectious and non non infectious disease. Then you can also uh, able to describe different modes of disease transmissions. The last three are more important in terms of your examinations. The first three objectives you you, you should understand the overall uh, the macro level uh, things. What is surveillance? What kind of surveillance mechanisms were followed in our country? What the purpose of the surveillance? Three things you should understand. Based on this understand understanding, you can develop. Uh, you can able to see the you can able to define communicable and non-communicable diseases and uh, discuss you can able to discuss the different components of uh, infectious and non-infectious disease then different modes of disease transmission also you are going to understand let's we start with the, the definition the the surveillance is uh, defined as a continuous process any any continuous uh, process or you can say ongoing activity of Ongoing activity of scrutiny of the factor that determine the occurrence and distribution of the disease and other health related events through a systematic collection of data. Any study or any surveillance or scrutiny of a disease that can happen ongoingly. There is no start, there is no end. So it's a, a ongoing activity, ongoing scrutiny of the factor that determine the occurrence and distribution of disease and other health related events called as uh, surveillance. Uh, through the surveillance, you are collecting the data systematically, uh, regularly to understand the particular disease. That's, a, that's called surveillance. It's an ongoing activity of particular health related event. You are regularly generating the volume of data through your surveillance. That's all the surveillance means it's an ongoing activity. It happened continuously. The data are generated continuously through the surveillance. Let's move on to next one. Uh, purpose of doing surveillance. Why or what, what are all the purpose where uh, you are going to study, you are going to do the surveillance. Purpose of the surveillance. You, if you want to study, yeah, if you want to identify certain diseases, 
or injuries, hazards, health hazards, or other health related factors as early as possible. If you want to understand a particular pandemic or a particular outbreak, you want to understand a particular outbreak, you need to initiate a surveillance. This surveillance will help you to identify as early as possible. So, for, for example, you, you, through the surveillance, you can able to you do the predictions and the early detection of outbreak. Uh, the first and foremost purpose of the surveillance is to prediction and early detection of particular outbreak. I hope you start now you can able to remember what is outbreak. Outbreak is supposed to happen in a particular place. When outbreak happens, someone is reporting that outbreak to the nearby primary health centers, then you are going to stop that outbreak within the particular area. So for that purpose, the surveillance is very important. Then the surveillance, it's, it will give us, it will provide a scientific baseline data and information for priority settings. Priority settings, planning, implementation, and evaluation of disease control program for both communicable and non-communicable diseases. So you, it will support us to prioritize priority setting, planning, implementations, and evaluation of particular disease control program. It will give us. Then it also give us, our, uh, it define and define the magnitude of the magnitude and distribution of the disease by time, person, and places. So it will it will support us to define the magnitude and distribution of the disease by time, place, uh, and person dimensions. So there are three purposes. First one, it will give us to it will support us to predict and early detection of outbreak. Then it will give, it will support us to plan uh, priority settings, planning, implementation, and evaluation of particular. Uh, disease control program for both communicable and non-communicable disease. Then it also support us to define the magnitude of the magnitude and distribution of the disease in terms of time, in terms of person and place dimensions. Uh, now we are moving to see the uh, integrated disease surveillance system. That's the one. It's a recent uh, phenomena. It introduced almost all the uh, countries because previously, uh, especially when you are uh, looking at the earlier history of communicable disease, uh, the surveillance of communicable disease, each disease they are doing different way. But now, uh, after 2000, uh, many countries have started following integrated disease surveillance system. This integrated disease surveillance system, it is a strategy. It is, not, it is a strategy. It combines several activities from different vertical programs. Uh, different vertical programs are coordinated and streamlined in order to make best use of the scary resources. Uh, scary resources in terms of uh, surveillance functions, skills, resources, and target populations. For, a, for better understanding, if you are going to your uh, PHC, primary health centers, primary health centers, they are managing, they are maintaining a farm which comprising of uh, early diagnosis, the diagnosis form will support them to identify all the uh, communicable and non-communicable disease related information. Whoever is visiting primary health centers, they are supposed to enroll themselves through this IDS strategies. This IDS strategy or in, uh, integrated disease surveillance strategy, it recommend, recommends a coordinated and integrated surveillance activity for the disease of public health importance. So who were visiting primary health centers, they supposed to, uh, the data were collected from them in terms of, uh, in terms of public health important diseases, for example, cholera, malaria, or the recent corona. So this kind of uh, public health important diseases were collected through various mechanisms with inbuilt in the integrated disease surveillance systems. It's a, it's a, it's an ongoing program of all the primary health centers because the, uh, Primary health centers were collecting the data. They are sending it on regular basis to the national capital where they are maintaining the public health, where they are monitoring the public health important diseases. Now we are going to see, going to see actual, actual uh, epidemiology. Uh, you are going to understand the epidemiology of communicable diseases. You can say CCD. Um, 
this is when uh, the, the previous uh, items it's it will support us to understand the communicable and non-communicable diseases now we are going to see actual um, the mechanism of communicable disease and non-communicable disease this is, the, this is the one we are going to follow it this is the one you are going to write your exams actual syllabus starts from this slide so the communicable disease uh, a communicable or infectious disease is an illness caused by transmission of a specific infectious agent or a toxic product from an infected person or animal to a susceptible host either directly or indirectly through an intermediary intermediate animal host vector or inanimate environment it's a it's a it's a holistic definition about communicable disease but it's talking about there are different things it's talking about when you are looking at uh, the natural history of disease the susceptibility stage that the stage one that's the susceptibility stage that's when the any host material or infectious agent enter into our body which is not showing any resemblance which is not showing any um, symptoms so the any communicable disease or infectious disease is an uh, illness caused by a transmission of specific infectious agent or its toxic product from an infected person or animal to a susceptible host either directly or indirectly through an uh, intermediate animal host or vector or inanimate inanimate environment um, usually the infectious disease um, the organisms that cause the disease organisms that causing a particular disease which go or which enter inside the human body called as pathogens there are three things is going to make infectious disease one is pathogen another one is bacteria third one is virus so this the, the pathogens it's a, it's enter into the human body that creates uh, infectious disease both bacteria and viruses are the best known pathogens this bacteria and viruses were either enter through direct or indirect mode then the the, the same way fungus protist and parasites can also causing diseases like uh, bacteria and virus this is considered as a pathogens fungus and protist and parasites can also causing diseases so this diseases are said to be either through uh, pathogens or fungus parasites the diseases are said to be the infectious or communicable disease if the pathogens can be passed from one person to another person um, i am showing you a di diagram it can happen in two ways the uh, infectious disease can happen from one man to another man from one host to another host the host sometimes human to human sometimes human to animal it may be sometimes animal to human also so the the disease trans transmission uh, can happen from human to human or from animal to human so vice versa it can happen from um, uh, animal to human or as well as uh, human to animals so now um, you can see what is an epidemic we, we already discussed what is epidemic in our uh, unit 3 but here i just wanted to remind certain things uh, epidemics it is an uh, occurrence of cases of illness in a specific health related behavior or other health related event clearly in excess of normal expectancy in a community or regions for example um, within 10 miles something happened people may be getting diarrhea people may getting diarrhea in 10 miles in 15 miles uh, apart the, the cases of diarrhea admitted in kawasaki clinic it may be going behind the normal maybe one or two cases recorded one or two cases in a week that is a normal case if it is going more than 10 then it clearly shows it's a excessive cases of diarrhea in 15 miles it shows something happen it will affect the entire community 
So the excess number of cases in terms of uh, illness or specific health-related behavior or health-related events happen, that number of cases will show us it is going behind the normalcy in a particular community or the region. That is called epidemic. Um, I hope you understand uh, what is epidemic. So the endemic, I just wanted to remind the endemic, uh, because already we, did, we discussed these things very, very detailed manner in your uh, unit three. Um, endemic means a disease that usually present in a population or a given area at relatively high prevalence and uh, incidence rates in compared to other areas. For example, something happened in uh, Lapula. It's an area specific uh, diseases. Uh, for example, uh, um, in coastal area, uh, in coastal area, the people affected with uh, um, radiation is very common. People affected with radiation is very common in uh, coastal areas. But the number of the high prevalence in terms of uh, high prevalence and also the incident rates due to um, the radiations. It will, it will show us little different from the earlier one. The endemic means that particular disease already prevailed in that particular area, but number of cases were high. The, the relatively high prevalence, the incidence rates is high, then if there is something happened in that particular area, maybe the, the sand mining in the coastal area, it will accru accruate the, um, the radiations. It can, it can make number of cases were high in particular period, a particular period. For example, malaria is an endemic disease in Lapula. It's common, but it is not common in other areas. But it is, it, it is an area specific disease uh, within Zambia. So this endemic, if it is going higher in Lapula, then it is called endemic disease. Uh, I'm giving you a list of uh, major emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases. In, in this slide. So there are major emerging diseases as well as re-emerging diseases. Re-emerging diseases, the disease which came earlier, but again it comes. So the, the number of, uh, the list I'm giving here, HIV AIDS, Hepatitis B and Hepatitis C, tuberculosis, Tengu, malaria, um, then plague, cholera, these are all the list it's showing us. These are all the common major emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases. Cholera, it can happen from uh, many changes. Still, it is again, it's coming. We re recently, 2018, we see cholera, but it's a, it's a re-emerging uh, disease. Um, major uh, reasons for re-emergence of certain infectious diseases, it can, the re major uh, re reasons for re-emergence of infectious disease, it's mainly happened due to high population growth, uncontrolled, unplanned urbanizations. When, if, for example, uncontrolled and unplanned urbanizations, it, 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 it takes many slums were evolving in recent days in uh, Lusaka, maybe especially in after uh, 1990s, when uh, the mining sector down, the people who worked in mines, they were moved to the uh, urban areas and creating new slums. So this kind of uh, high population growth, uncontrolled, unplanned urbanization brings uh, major reasons for emergence of new infectious diseases. Then poor environmental sanitation, the, um, the city councils not properly maintaining the environmental sanitation that will make the emergence of new infectious diseases. Then migration of populations, you can see the, um, the migration, migration issues, migration issues major, playing major role uh, uh, in recent uh, corona infections because the, in, the infectious agents were transferred from some other places through migrant uh, populations then natural disaster it also it also coming up it also coming up with uh, diseases then growing international trade tourism rapid travel alteration in microorganisms then resistance to antimicrobial activities insecticide resistance weak public health system, illiteracy and ignorance. These are all the factors where reasons, factors are reasons were playing major role in bringing uh, emergence of infectious disease or re-emergence of uh, infectious disease were done due to the above mentioned uh, reasons. 
when you are looking at these reasons, most of the things were uh, the the main main med, uh, changes were happening in the existing situations, which leads to infectious diseases. This um, the transmissions were when you are looking at any disease or when you are looking at any the natural history of disease. The, there are um, three factors were uh, playing major role to deciding the the infection chain, yeah, the chain of transmissions of infectious disease. Uh, there should be an uh, infectious agents, then the transmission process, then there is an uh, host host. So yeah, infections that happen through the infectious agents, that infectious agents were transmitting to the host environment. So infection transfer from the agent through your transmission process, then it reaches to a host. So, but all these three uh, phenomena, agents, transmission process, and host, it's centered around the environment. So all these three uh, uh, process were getting it are uh, getting the connections from the environment. For example, uh, repeatedly I'm telling you the in my classes the. Um, uh, the, the 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 cholera incidents were happen uh, um, from um, the vipro cholera. It's actually it's um, from from a, a stagnant water. A mosquito getting the uh, infectious agents. Mosquito uh, getting the infectious agents. Then you it's transmitting through a human body. Then it uh, it affecting other human body using human body as a host. But the environment is playing major role in producing cholera, um, the disease. So the infectious agent mostly it's a pathogens, virulence, infectivity. So it's playing infectious agent, agents playing major role. It creating pathogens, uh, virus, and infectivity. It created by the infectious agents. Then the transmission process. This is the second important link within the infection, the chain of infections. This transmission is uh, defined as a spread of infectious agent through environment or another person from the reservoir to reservoir to an, uh, and, and the host. So the transmission normally happens from it's a spread of infectious agent through the environment or to another person from the reservoir and the source. Then the th the the third one method of transmission mostly at any infectious disease it can happen through direct mode and also indirect mode so direct mode mostly touching others kissing sexual intercourse childbirth breastfeeding or airborne airborne or short distance via droplets by coughing laughing sneezing spiting these things were making uh, the, the trans direct transmission then and also the transmission of uh, blood transplant uh, placental from mother to fetal so these are all the way these are all the ways were considered as a direct transmissions uh, touching kissing sexual intercourse childbirth breastfeeding airborne short distance via droplets transmission of uh, blood transplacental from mother to fetal especially this recent corona it's uh, the droplets that's why we were uh, the the person who are affected. They supposed to wear the mask. If you are wearing a mask, you can uh, keep the infections with you. You are not going to transmit anyone. You are just to arrest the transmission using the masks were uh, encouraged. Then the indirect transmissions. It's a uh, vehicle uh, vehicle burn transmissions by contaminated food and water were transmitted from one place to another place. Uh, the vehicles, uh, the contaminated waters were uh, water and food. It's uh, it's uh, it's some sort of a, um, it's a vehicle point transmissions for taking the virus from one place to another place. Then vector point transmissions, then uh, para uh, para by unsafe infections, uh, fumigate transmissions, uncleaned hand. These are all the way indirect transmissions were happening. When you, if you want to control uh, the infectious disease, you need to do five uh, ding, uh, five uh, um, things at uh, national level. So, if you want to control uh, infectious disease, you should control the infectious infectious agent in the 
environments. That's why when cholera happened, uh, the first thing the state supposed to do, find out the source of infections. So they wanted to remove all the stagnant waters. They supposed to clean that, uh, either they have to remove or either they have to clean that uh, stagnant waters. That's the main main area you need to cons uh, you need to consider. What you are doing there, you are you are controlling the inf infectious agent from that particular place. You are not allowing the infectious agents traveling from that place to another place. Then the second one, the control of infectious agent in the host itself. The what you are not allowing the infectious agent. You are you are trying to keep the infectious agents within the host. For example, if an outbreak happen, the first you you need to the infected person supposed to be kept in a quarantine place. So it, what it means, you are quarant quarantining someone who infected with a particular disease. You are not allowing the host. You are not allowing the infectious agents moving from host to another transmitter. So you are you are just keeping the host with a particular agent. The agents were the infectious agents were not allowed to go outside the host. Then third one, controlling up outbreak. Outbreak of uh, uh, infectious agent, infectious diseases. So if, you, if, if something happens, you are not able to control the outbreak. Maybe it go behind uh, outbreak uh, coming as an epidemic. Then you are trying to close a particular area. That's what happening currently. We are in a we are in a closer at a national level closer. This national level closer where control the outbreak. If you are closing means 80 percentage of the infections you are trying to avoid. It is not about 100 percent you are treating, but you are trying to control the outbreak from a particular place. So apart from this, you need to do several other measures. You need to find out vaccine and other things are there. Then there are specific measures to control HIV epidemic. You can do continuous uh, sensitization programs, which are waiting, which mostly giving the preventive message measures. These are all the way you can trying to control the communicable diseases. Because these things we discussed already, we discussed controlling source of infections. Uh, we discussed several uh, several things. Uh, I just am skipping this four slides. Um, now we were uh, just left with the uh, uh, NCD, non-communicable disease. Um, I hope you now you can able to remember what is communicable disease. Now we are moving to non-communicable disease. Uh, non-communicable disease it covers wide range of uh, heterogeneous con heterogeneous conditions which are affecting different organs and systems of different socioeconomic groups. This is little different from the uh, communicable disease. Communicable disease it can affect any group, but non-communicable disease it's cover. It's a wide range of uh, heterogeneous conditions which are affecting different organs and systems of different socioeconomic group. Further, when you are looking at past uh, last two decades, the morbidity and mortality due to cardiovascular diseases or mental disorder or cancer or the trauma have been raising out of the different reasons. Um, these diseases, it's a uh, when you are looking at cardiovascular disease, mental disorder, cancer, and trauma, these things were it's not going to affect entire community. Community, it will affect certain groups who are vulnerable to certain infections. When you are looking at the definition of non-infectious disease, the disease that are not caused by the pathogens, any disease which are which, is, which are not caused by any pathogens, considered as non non-infectious disease or non-communicable. Diseases. Uh, the causes for non-communicable diseases, it's, uh, it creates, it's raised in life, life expectancy and increasing number of senior citizens. Senior, increasing number of senior citizens, it's a problem. It happened it happen because of raise of uh, raise in the life expectancy. When you are looking at the, um, the population of Zambia and Japan, population of Zambia, the people who are below 40, Around 60 percent of the people who are below 40 years. But when you are looking at uh, the population of uh, Japan, more than 60 percent of the population belongs to the same number of categories because their life expectancy is better than uh, Zambia. So the, when you are looking at the health system, 
it increase a lot of positive factor as well as increasing the negative factors when you are reaching the senior citizens you are you are you are you are living but you are living with a lot of uh, age related diseases then the second causes the changing lifestyle um, during your lifetime you are taking a lot of faulty diets use of alcohol uh, sedentary life physical sedentary life physical inactivity and raising stress related to the obesity and stress related problems this will make because of our because of our uh, lifestyle changes our the physical activity is nowadays it is reducing so this reducing of physical activity which causing lot of um, a lot of changes in our lifestyle this also leading to uh, non communicable diseases then our uh, we are exp exposing to the environmental risk factors especially air pollution uh, now the it consider several metropolitan cities were uh, not not a right place to live because of air pollution then use of tobacco is increasing then increasing population and raising in raising in automobile and trauma related accidents incidents were were increasing nowadays these um, these changes are this change of lifestyle which causing several implications in the view of chronic morbidity and high cost involved in management of non communicable disease diseases attention need to be focused on prevention the diseases when you are talking about non communicable diseases you can you should you should give more more attention to prevention aspects and early detection and appropriate management of non communicable diseases for example um, the any anyone who reaching above 40 they supposed to undergo certain um, the diagnosis um, many hospitals they are having a full body checkup whether you are having disease or not but you should undergo above 40 you should undergo certain Uh, full body checkup then only you can able to know the uh, your, your your body conditions so the early detection is one of the important factor to to manage the implication of non communicable diseases because this ncd it have uh, multi factorial origins it cast the ncd mainly cast multi factorial origins because of our, our change of range of lifestyle risk taking behavior changing dietary pattern physical inactivity use of alcohol and tobacco and stress in life in the life have been incriminated this will leads to non communicable diseases so the for uh, non communicable diseases throughout the all levels of care so as to reduce the morbidity and mort mortality rate at national level so for for uh, the action we supposed to do it we need to have a well structured information education and communications for primary and secondary prevention then uh, we need to have reorientation and skills updation of healthcare providers because the healthcare providers were uh, supposed to be reorient and skills updations skills updations uh skills upgradation in uh, in ncds they should do they should because lot of new diseases are coming this new diseases supposed to be taken care by the um by, by the healthcare providers then you need to establish a referral linkages between primary primary and secondary to tertiary institutions if someone is reporting someone is reporting in a primary health center they is supposed to be referred in a further setup so you need to establish a referral linkage which is suitable which is capable of catch, capturing uh, patients from uh, grassroots to national capitals then you need to uh, protection and provision of drugs for ncd that also you need to do for example recent corona uh, the readiness level of uh, african continent is just on a 60 percentage the african country entire african continent which is the readiness level uh, study done by the who it shows only 60 percentage if something happen we don't have a capacity to uh, fight against the new diseases so the development of institution for rehabilitation of disabled persons due to ncd or teaching person to live with disability these are all the new areas were coming up due to non communicable diseases that also we need to take care then we need to establish development of hospice care for terminally ill patients people who cannot offered uh, home based care 
So we need to establish hospi care setup at community level uh, where the people can cannot be able to give the home based care. They are supposed to kept under uh, hospi. Then you need to establish creation of epidemiological database, especially for NCD, which will give us a further learning. So this is how we can able to manage non-communicable diseases. I hope uh, this is this is when I'm ending. Um,